Hey everybody, my name is Sawyer Guerra and I'm a solutions consultant here with Trimec. Today what we're going to do is talk about how we can use SOLIDWORKS Cloud to create structural members or just any kind of parts with structural members. Now what's nice about the 3D Experience platform here is I have this task here for building a conveyor frame. So I know, okay, I'm working on a conveyor frame. I'm going to move this to InWork so whoever assigned it to me gets notified. But also, there's an attachment here so I can say, oh, I'm going to be building this specific conveyor frame. Now I'll go ahead and open this up in XDesign just to see what I'm working with here and see what still needs to be done. With this model opening up in XDesign, I can see that we have two sketches. We got a sketch on the top and we have a sketch on the side. And these are gonna be what's gonna help me locate and place my structural members. Now, I'm in XDesign right now and I'm not gonna be able to create structural members with this. So I'm gonna quickly switch to XFrame. And XFrame is gonna be my app that allows me to create those structural members similar to SOLIDWORKS Weldments. So now that I'm back, the interface looks pretty much the same. The big changes here are that I get a structures tab. I'm going to start off and I'm going to create some structural members. Now I have options to go, you know, path segments, reference planes. I can go from a face or between two members. But for this case, I'm just going to go with regular path segments. It's going to start to pull my available profiles, things that I have access to, whether they're standards or I custom created them from a sketch. What I'll do first is I'm going to modify the profile. And in this case, I'm looking for just a very specific one. I want it to be square tube and I want to set the size. And as you can see, there's a lot of standard profiles, but again, we can create them ourselves. Now that this is done, I can just start to select the line segments that I want to create these members for. Now, what it'll do by default is obviously it's sticking it in the dead center of that profile, but I don't necessarily want it to be in the middle. So what I can do is go to the top left, say, and that's going to shift it down to the right. So that sketch I had is the very top of my profile. And I can finish that segment. Now I'm going to go ahead and I can create some more over here. So I'll do the same thing, same profile. And if I wanted to make changes to that profile, I could either go back up to this top path segment member or I can modify in this flyout toolbar. And I can see that they're gonna go in and it's gonna have that same behavior that I left before, which is top left. And that looks pretty good to me, so I will create it. But if we look at this, it doesn't look too great. I have intersecting members here. I have intersecting members over here. I wanna change that. The first change that I'm probably gonna do is I notice that this member, member 13 here, doesn't actually intersect anything. And that's gonna be a problem when I go to trim. So I can just as easily grab that corner and just extend it down a little bit so that way it goes into the other member. Now from here, I can just grab my trim member tool and this allows me to either select an individual member and that'll just grab the two corners or the one corner, whatever's associated with it, or I'm able to select the entire structure system and that's gonna gather all the intersections and let me kind of just do bulk operations. So for this, for one member endpoints, I'm just gonna go with a planar full contact and that'll just trim it so it goes right to the body. For my two members, up at the top here where two members are intersecting, I want these to be body trim. So they're gonna stop when it intersects each other. When this operation finishes, we'll notice that this one on the right here is long. The two sides should be short, but this bottom left corner just isn't doing that. So what I'm able to do, I can select that corner and I can just flip the order that it's actually trimming in. So that way, now we have short and short, long and long. If I take a look at my three members, I have corner one and corner two here, because that's where three members intersect. And if I want to, I'm able to come in and specify the three member trim. And I can say which ones are the corners and which ones are the trimming boundaries. And I can just quickly 
specify that for both of them, and I'll just go with planar full contact so they trim against each other. Jumping ahead a little bit in my design process, I'm almost done. I just have maybe just one structural member left that I want to add to my conveyor frame. And that's going to go across the middle here just to help add some support when we put a heavy load on the table. Now what I could do, just like the beginning ones, is start off with a sketch. I could, you know, create a plane, put my sketch line somewhere in the middle, and that would work fine. But for this case, I'm going to use the between members structural member. With this, I'm able to come in and just select the two structural members that I want to create between. And then I can specify either a plane that I might have had set up. But in this case, I'll just do a distance from the member. And I know that this is 750 millimeters long, so I can just split the difference with a 375 millimeters, and that's going to put it at the center. Now it's going to try to locate it, you know, center. I could go top center, just like I could with the other ones. But in this case, I'll just go center so it's even. Just like the other members, we see that it's intersecting. So I'll just do a little bit of cleanup here. And instead of selecting the entire structure system this time, I'll just select that one member. And then I can specify that same trim just like before. Now with my design done, I can generate my cut list. So that way on my manufacturing floor, they know how many and what length of tubing I'm gonna to need to create this conveyor frame. It'll generate my cut list and I can export this table either to my 3D drive or I can save it somewhere locally on my computer as a CSV. Now that I'm fully done with my design, I think this is a good spot to wrap up. I'll save this so it saves to my 3D space. And then I'll go back to my tasks to update my team. Now that I'm back in my tasks, the first thing I'm going to do is open up this conveyor frame task. And I'm going to come down to my deliverables. This is going to allow me to search for that file on my platform. And I can select my conveyor frame. And I can save it so that way now that conveyor frame that I just finished working on is attached to the task. The next thing I can do, just as easily drag it over to completed. So now my manager who assigned me this task is being notified that I'm done with it. And secondly, is able to come into the task similar to how I grab the attachment. They could see that deliverable and that way they know which file I finished. They can check it out and let me know if they need any changes.